Sutra, your basic purpose in cultivating is to transcend the wearisome defilements. But if you don't renounce your lustful thoughts, you will not be able to get out of the dust. Commentary. The Buddha is speaking to Ananda here when he says, your basic purpose in cultivating is to, to transcend the wearisome defilements. You want to get out of birth and death, but if you don't renounce your lustful thoughts, you will not be able to get out of the dust. If you do not cut off sexual desire, it will be impossible to get out of the mundane defilements of the world. That's because thoughts of sexual desire are themselves defiling. They themselves are the wearisome dust, not to speak of engaging in lustful practices even the presence of such thoughts is unclean. If you don't renounce sexual design, it's entirely unreasonable to hope to become enlightened and accomplish Buddhahood, to hold on to sexual design on the one hand and expect to become enlightened on the other hand. is the stupidest kind of thinking. People who think that way are impossible to teach. Even if Shakyamuni Buddha himself appeared in the world right now, he would have no way to bring such people to attainment of fusion. Such people are the most downwitted of all. Sutra, even though one may have some wisdom and the manifestation of Chan Samadhi, one is certain to enter demonic paths if one does not cut off the lust. At best, one will be a demon king. On the average, one will be in the retinue of demons. At the lowest level, one will be a female demon. Commentary Even though one may have some wisdom and the manifestation of Transamadhi, one is certain to enter demonic paths if one does not cut off lust. One may be wise. You may be wise and when you sit down to meditate, you may experience light ease and feel extremely comfortable. That is, you can enter Chan Samadhi. You think you're wise then. If you don't put a stop to lust, you end up a demon. At best, one will be a demon king in the sixth desire heaven. On the average, one will be in the retinue of demons. One will become an ordinary demon. At the lowest level, one will be a female demon. They are beautiful but extremely coarse. People with wisdom should be careful. Smart people should take care. Take careful note of this passage. Don't let your intelligence go back on you so that you make a mistake in the end. Don't have the attitude, you don't understand but I do. You're not clear but I am. That's petty intelligence, petty wisdom. Don't let the promising future go to ruin. Sutra, so these demons have their groups of disciples. Each says of himself that he has accomplished the unsurpassed way. Commentary, these people with a little wisdom who do not cut off their lust are always talking about love and desire. I love you, you love me, and they love back and forth until they become demonic. Then what happens? These demons have their groups of disciples. It just says of himself that he has accomplished the unsurpassed way. They too will have disciples and protectors. Totally without shame, they will loudly pronounce that they have achieved the highest path. I'm a Buddha. We are all supreme and unsurpassed. Basically, such people are demons, but they don't admit to it. They profess instead to be Buddhas. You see, they are even phony Buddhas, but they don't see themselves as phony. They think they are for real. They believe in heaven above, on earth below. I alone am honored. Sutra. After my extinction in the Dharma ending age, these odds of demons will about spreading like wildfire as they openly practice greed and lust. Claiming to be good knowing advisors, they will cause living beings to fall into the pit of love and views and lose the way to Bodhi. Commentary Shakyamuni Buddha said, While I'm in the world, such demons will not dare to show themselves. But after my extinction in the Dharma ending age, these odds of demons will abound. 
It is just our present age that is being referred to here when the Dharma is about to die out. There are simply too many of these demons around, going about everywhere discussing sexual desire, and they themselves revel in lust, be they men or women. At the same time, they think that they are enlightened and have become Buddhas. How is it that I recognize such people as these, such as the one who says he is a Buddha? He won't mention any names. He said he was a Buddha, and he, I said he was a demon. Who's a demon? He said. You are, I replied. How did I know? He's just like what's described here. He's always talking about emotion and love. Love, love, I love everybody. It's really shameless. What right do you have to be in love with everyone? This demon's about spreading like white fire as they openly practice greed and lust. They be all the rage in the world. Ignorant people will be taken in by them, thinking what they have to say makes sense. It will especially agree with young people's way of thinking. As the saying goes, persons of similar astral church taste get together. They praise one another as they go down this road. If they didn't agree with each other's ideas, they wouldn't do that. If people's paths are not in agreement, they won't collaborate with one another. But if their thinking is the same, then the blind can lead the blind. How beautiful! I'm not scolding people here, but if one who is dazed transmits the delusion to another. When all is said and done, neither one understands. The teacher falls into the house, and the disciples burrow in after him. The teacher winds up in the house, and when his disciples show up there as well, he is surprised. How did you get here? This is a terrible place. You came first, and John, my our teacher. So of course we will follow you. They reply, claiming to be good knowing advisers. They boast. I give lectures all over the place of,、uh, to lots of people. Ridiculous! They will cause living beings to fall into the pit of love and views and lose the weight body. They cause all they come in contact with to fall into the pit of sexual desire. They forfeit body and end up in the house. Sutra. When you teach people in the world to cultivate samadhi, they must first of all suffer the mind of lust. This is the first clear and unanswerable instruction on purity given by the first commons and the Buddhas of the past, warned honored ones. Commentary: Demon kings advocate love. The difference between that and the teaching of a Bodhisattva is ever so slight, like the flip of a hand. In what way is it different? Bodhisattvas also love people, but their love is a compassionate and protective kind, devoid of sexual desire. But there is a current of lust that runs through everything a demon king says. He openly advocates it to the point that he says that the heavier one's sexual desire, the higher the level of enlightenment one can reach. This kind of deviant doctrine harms people. Bodhisattvas have no lust. They do not make distinction between living beings and themselves. Demons have motives. They are greedy for things. Bodhisattvas have have no unsubtle motives and are not greedy. In regard to this, the Buddha's teaching explains the twelve things of conditioned causation. When you teach people in the world to cultivate samadhi, they must first of all sever the mind of lust. Teach them to cut off their thoughts of sexual desire. This is the first clear and unanswerable instruction on purity, given by the first come ones and the Buddhas of the past, world honored ones. This is a method of teaching used by the first come ones. It is the resolution of all the Buddhas of the past. This is clear instruction that teaches people how to be pure. One must cut off lust. This is a fixed principle. It is not the least bit flexible. It's not to say that one can have lust or not have it. One must get rid of it if you want to be enlightened, and also hold on to your thoughts of lust. 
then you certainly will enjoy the retinue of demons. Sutra. Therefore, Ananda, if cultivators of Transamadhi do not cut off lust, they will be like someone who could send sand in the hope of getting rice. After hundreds of thousands of ants, it will still be just a hot sand. Why? It wasn't rice to begin with. It was only sand. Commentary. You see, now he brings up an analogy. He tells Ananda, you don't believe it. So I explain the principle for you. Therefore, Ananda, if cultivators of Transamadhi do not cut off lust, they will be like someone who cooks sand in the hope of getting rice. If one does not serve a sexual desire and yet cultivates and meditates every day, then one will cultivate on the other, on the one hand and have outflows on the other. Everything one gains will be dissipated. Whatever one gains in cultivation will be lost tenfold in outflows. If one cultivates ten times as much, one will lose a hundred times as much in outflows. Unable to renounce a sexual desire, one still sits in meditation with the hope of getting enlightened, with the aim of getting a little upside down bliss. This is just like cooking sand in the hope of getting rice. After hundreds of thousands of ants, it will still be just hot sand. It's useless. Why? It wasn't rice to begin with. It was only sand. You expect to become enlightened without giving up sexual desire. It's the same as expecting to get rice from sand. There's something else to be said here. If you can serve a sexual desire, then even if you are together with the opposite sex all day long, there will be no problem. There won't be any sexual desire, any appearance of male or female, any appearance of pupil, of self, of living beings, or of a lifespan. Some people know no shame and say, that's the way I am. To just say you're that way isn't enough. There's no proof. How do you know you're that way? If you were that way, you basically wouldn't recognize that you were. You couldn't have the idea that you didn't have any sexual desire. If you don't, you simply don't. You wouldn't go around advertising it. That just shows that you really aren't that way. If you really don't have any sexual desire, then the eyes see forms appear, but inside there is nothing. The ears hear defiling sounds, but the mind does not know of them. No matter how pleasing the sound the ear picks up, your mind is unaware of it. Then you've got a little going for you. And then if you can reach the point that you can walk, sit, and lie down together with someone of the opposite sex without there being any incident, any arisal of thoughts of sexual desire, and really have there been none, that will count. It's not to say that your mind still raises, but you grit your teeth and say firmly, I can take it. That doesn't count. It has to be that not one thought arises, the mind does not move, that there basically is no trace of lust in your heart. That's genuine. If you occasionally are still aware of what women are all about, then you've failed the test. Once there was someone who got enlightened and went to seek certification from his teacher, what enlightenment have you opened? His teacher asked. His reply was, Oh, before I never realized it, but now I know that Bishunis are women. His teacher checked him out with the Buddha eye and saw that indeed he was enlightened. You're all right, said, he said in certification. Who doesn't know that, you say. If you weren't enlightened, you wouldn't even say that much. It was because he had awakened that he voiced that observation. This is not something you can treat people with, especially since his teacher had oh, the Buddha eye open. He looked at him and knew that he had realized the first fruition of Ahashi. Sutra, if you think the Buddha's wonderful fruition and still have physical lust, then even if you attain a wonderful awakening, it will be based in lust. With lust at the source, you will revolve in the three paths and not be able to get out. Which road will you take to cultivate and be satisfied to the first common nirvana? 
Commentary, the Buddha said to Ananda, your fondness for Mantaji's daughter not only involved thoughts of lust, you still had physical lust as well. If you see the Buddha's wonderful fruition and still have physical lust, then even if you attain a wonderful awakening, it will be based in lust. Although you may attain the subtle principles at the heart of it, you still have not gotten rid of the rules of lust. With lust at the source, you will revolve in the three paths and not be able to get out. In the future, you will certainly fall into their hells. The three paths are those of animals, hungry ghosts, and beings in their hells. And you will just revolve in these three and be unable to leave them. Which road will you take to cultivate and be satisfied to the third common nirvana? Which of these paths will Will lead you to that fruition. So try. You must cut off the lust, which is intrinsic in both body and mind. Then get rid of even the aspect of cutting it off. At that point, you have some hope of attaining the Buddha's body. Commentary. You must cut off the lust, which is intrinsic in both body and mind. You definitely must get rid of the most subtle and fine, the most. Infinite single single thought of lust. That just means that ignorance itself must go. You must be done. It must be done both physically and mentally. Then get rid of even the aspect of cutting it off. You cannot even be aware of having it cut it off. At that point, you have some hope of attaining the Buddha's body. Sutra. What I have said here is the Buddha's teaching. Any explanation counter to it is the teaching of Babayan. Babayan, commentary. What I have said here is the Buddha's teaching. This is the way the Buddha explained the Dharma. Any explanation counter to it is the teaching of Babayan methods taught by a demon king. Babayan is a Sanskrit term that means evil one and refers to Mara, the demon king. People who come to listen to the sutras must certainly be able to see the blind cannot come to hear the sutras, nor can the deaf or dumb. The more the people come to hear, the smarter they get. Everyone should open his eyes of genuine wisdom and truly turn the organ of the ear back to the self nature. Do not seek outside.